Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Good Owl Games and welcome to June's monthly roundup video. The one that probably shouldn't exist, but here it is anyway to tell you about some of the changes to my board game collection. <laughs> So hi everybody and welcome to my random chit chat video where once a month, roughly speaking, I sit down and I tell you about some of the changes to my board game collection. And the video is broke into sections so you can listen to, well you can hear about the new games I've been playing, just some of the general games I've been playing, there's a bit of chit chat and stuff at the end if you want to tune into that. Um, but I've put timestamps in this video so you can kind of hop along and hear about the games you might want to. So you know you can do that but of course I'd love if you listened to the um, whole thing in its entirety. Um, so yeah this month has gone super quick and at the end of last month's monthly round of video I said hey I'm going to take a break for a bit and this is me taking a break so <laughs> at the moment I'm not doing any board game reviews but I decided to keep this going because you know what I kind of missed you guys um, and I felt a little bit weird where it got to the end of the month and I, I wasn't doing anything um, so we thought we'd give that a go. Um, the other thing to take note of is I have recorded a video about my board game collection. Um, so whether I put that in this video or it gets its own video, you'll have to wait and see because I have it just recorded. So we'll see how it turns out. Maybe it'll be here, maybe it won't. But I thought I, I would warn you because, you know, the masses requested such a thing. Um, yeah, and I had a lot of fun cleaning my games room in time so that everything might look relatively shiny. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of just background stuff. Um, I guess you want to hear about the new games, right? Because you know, I assume that's why you're here. Um, so the first game out of the bath is, let me check my trusty list. Yeah, I guess we'll go with this. And this is Earth. Um, now, Earth has got kind of a reputation that precedes it. Um, I heard a lot of people talking about Earth. It had just come off of a Kickstarter. Um, so people were receiving their copies and there was much excitement and glee about Earth. Um, and when I saw pictures of it, I was kind of interested because in the photos, it, it looks like a, a tableau builder. There's lots of cards and things like that. And I'm quite a big fan of that style of game, but didn't know much about it beyond that. But sure, I'm a tie lucky enough that my local gaming shop um, got in a copy of Earth. So um, I was first in the queue to try and nab one of those. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, so Earth is kind of a, a game where you are, are building an island and you're building it with different flora and fauna and things like that to attract in um, animals. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the whole theme going on here. What it's really about is that you are playing cards into a tableau that will benefit each other um, so that you can kind of score points or um, draw more cards. There is a number of, of objectives to be met during the game um, for points as well. But the real thing that the cards do is they, they help each other depending on what type of card they are. So there are trees, there are shrubs, um, I could name more, they all have different icons. Um, but the mechanic here is placing the card is one thing. There is also a means for putting victory points onto each card. They have a number of cubes that you can put onto them. These can also kind of be used as resources as well. But also you grow your plants. <laughs> and I mean grow as in up, 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 up. Um, so each um, kind of plant will have a certain growth level on it and if you can get that many rings of growth um, onto it you will get extra points. Um, so this is kind of the towering spectacle that is Earth. Um, I quite like this game. It, it reminds me of a lot of other titles, if I'm honest. There's something a little terraforming Mars-like about it as you kind of dig through your cards, um, looking for kind of the right ones to fit, you know, what your build is. And you are limited in how many cards you can place out. So you kind of want the best card for the best situation. So there's a little bit of that there going on. Um, the building up and putting things out on your cards is a nice touch and the fact that you can use those to activate other things or for particular cards is good as well. So it feels like everything is very synergistic, if I'm honest. I suppose my biggest complaint about Earth might be a singular one, I'm, I'm not sure, um, but it's to do with the game's symbology. Um, you do start with your own player board and at the bottom of it it lists all the symbols and what they do, um, but I found it very hard to keep track of which one was for which. Some of them were quite similar and some of the ones for drawing cards in particular um, would have hands and things on them so they're a symbol you're used to seeing draw 
cards to your hand but it doesn't actually mean that in this context um, in particular there's um, a leaf icon which is victory points but if you put it in a box it means a cube not victory points um, and things like little things like that I found that kept um, tripping me up I've played the game three times now and I always found myself having to religiously check the symbols. They just wouldn't, I don't know, they just didn't feel natural to me. I think that's the biggest letdown for the game, considering it's got this section where it's like, here's all your symbols. Um, I found that a little bit odd. But overall, this is very fun. Um, it's very colourful. It, it feels quite strategic. Um, the other cool thing I didn't get to mention is that there is like a compost pile for cards you get rid of or you can add cards into it and that's worth points as well. So there's everything really fits together awfully nice and it's quite it's quite satisfying to play. There can be the issue of sometimes that, well, look, you just don't get the type of cards you were hoping for to complete your tableau and your opponent does. And I think that's just the case of any kind of larger card game where sometimes it all comes up trumps and sometimes it just doesn't. Um, but there are loads of ways to, you know, mitigate that and mess with cards and get lots of them or maybe you should just change your strategy on the fly kind of feeling but yes it's fun it's colorful it's bright um how long is it that's a really good question i think the last game i played was very long but i didn't even think that i would have said an hour i think it says 45 minutes per player um but it doesn't feel like that at all it feels like it's just a 40 minute game it feels like there's never enough time to do everything i want to in my tableau um, so yeah, I had good fun with that. I'm dying to hear if anyone else has been playing it or what they made of it. Um, but yeah, I like it quite a bit. So that is Earth. So next on the agenda is actually a game from Kickstarter or more or less an expansion, expansion game. And this is Vindication Chronicles. So Vindication is this really um, unusual kind of Euro game in which you are trying to redeem your character. Um, <laughs> and so you start off kind of, you know, in ill repute and you go around the board using cubes and things like that to basically improve your character, to become a better person. Um, and it's a cool concept for a game. Um, but to me, it has always felt very mechanical because it is a, a cube pusher. It's you go here, you get your cubes, you use your cubes to buy things to put into into your tableau um it's always got that kind of feeling to it and it's a race game kind of as well because it's usually first person past a certain number of points and the game will end um i always thought it was very inventive and very colorful very very um cool but very dry i might be the better word for it like it it while it has a cool idea the theme wasn't always massively carried through and you know what i didn't mind you're playing with cubes there's only so much imagination i think you can put into that um, but I've always been a big fan of Vindication but not quite as much as my husband who backed this Kickstarter um, and it's been a good while actually since this was backed um, but it came up um, came came up do you hear me it, it appeared one day you know out of the blue um, as a nice surprise and the Chronicles expansion um, certainly changes the game and there's lots of kind of bits to it but really what it comes down to is it adds story and theme to the game that had no story or theme um and what it basically means is that there are kind of events that unfold as you play the game so you will read something out you will make decisions um and depending what you do you have a character sheet now so that you can kind of um unlock certain things on it or fill in certain parts and it all felt a bit odd. It actually felt like um, a completely different game. It didn't really feel like Vindication. And it really slowed the original game down as well because now you have to take time to kind of read everything and engage with everything. Um, I don't know what to make of this expansion. I think maybe other people will like it more than I did. I think if you wanted more story, well, you're certainly getting that. And there's a lot of effort put into the bits of story kind of that you get and how this unlocks certain things. And there were new places on the board and that that you could go. Um, kind of all like jam packed into this kind of feature. Um, but I just, I just felt like it took away from what the game was originally trying to do. Um, it feels a little bit like the criticism of, you know, oh, well, there's no real theme on this game was really taken to heart from, from, 
on an unnecessary purpose. Um, so maybe this is just me. I loved the game just the way it was. I find I find this expansion um, to be kind of um, unnecessary, or at least changes the game in a way that. If I had seen the original game with these changes, I don't think I would have bought it. Um, now, maybe there's loads of people falling all over it and I'm really excited to have this kind of experience while they play games. And more power to you. Um, I guess it's just not something that usually appeals to me. Um, but I do feel like the expansion is well done. I think there's a, a lot in it. Like, it's jam-packed full of things. Um, just none of them that I found kind of... I don't know, overly helped the game, at least in my eyes. So that is Vindication Chronicles. Okay, and this last month's game has come from a rather unusual place, one which I will elaborate on in a little bit in the, the next section. Um, but this is Ready, Set, Bet. And it's from Alderac Games, and it's from designer John D. Clare, who's someone that we kind of, I don't want to say, I don't want to say I religiously follow, but it's a designer whose name I'll keep an eye on. Um, and if a game has their name on it, I'm, I'm kind of interested. I'll definitely check it out. Um, so Ready, Set, Bet um, came out a little bit a while ago, and there was quite a bit of fanfare about it um, on the internet. But it looked, it looked like a racing game. So I was like, okay, that, that's great. What, what would I do with a racing game? Um, and well, sure enough, that's exactly what it is. Um, and the reason being here is that kind of as of late, I've been getting to play games with more than two people. And so I'm trying to kind of pad out my collection a bit, maybe with games I would normally not have looked at because there was, there was no point. Um, so Ready, Set, Bet is the first of these. Um, and what's it about well yes it is a horse racing game the 10 horse giving a respectable run the eight horse hangs on to its place in the top three um what's cool about this one is it's well it you can use an app to play with it um not normally a big fan of app driven games but this one is exceptional and i think it makes a really big difference because what happens in during the game is that there will be a number of races um normally you can play this without the app if you want by the way um you can roll dice to see how far each horse will move and while this is happening you get to place bets there's a big big board and there's loads of places to to bet your money on and loads of different ways to bet as well um and you'll get to bet until a particular point there's like a red line and when three horses cross it no more betting and then you wait to see who the winner is um and the winner is the person with the most money after i think it's four rounds um so that's kind of the game it's very simplistic um yeah there's no kind of I suppose bells and whistles about it. Um, I guess what's special with this is the real time element. And that is particularly true if you're using the app because the app does the dice rolling for you. So the horses are running alongside. There's a commentator as well to, to, to tell you how the horses are doing, to remind you to bet, the things like that. I think the commentator is really, really good. And it really gets you into the, the mood, you know, all the kind of sounds and stuff like that um, to play the game. And it means that you can just watch for deciding when you're going to bet. Now, betting happens in real time. So the horse moves, you want to bet now, you better get your arm out kind of fast before somebody else does. So there's lots of things like that. Um, and of course, the, you know, as the race changes, you might want to change your bets, do different things. Um, and that's kind of the excitement of the game. Everyone kind of watching together to see who's going to make the most money. Um, it goes up to a quite a large player count, which is pretty great because um, it's that kind of game. I could see this at like a casino night or something like that. Um, definitely. Um, the real fun part is that this actually plays rather well with two players. Um, and the only reason I know this is because when we first got it, we were like, we should probably try and play it once ourselves before, you know, I teach other people how to play it. So we were like, we'll just have a game at two. I'm sure it'll be terrible because betting games, bidding games at two, bleh. Um, but actually it worked really really well <laughs> we had we had an awful lot of fun with it as in I, I played so much of this game in the first week of getting it that I could hear the announcer in my sleep quite literally <laughs> um, and it's so quick and easy to play like the games take less than like I want to say 20 minutes if even um, that you find yourself when you finish one set of races you're like oh we'll just go again you can just hit the button and go once more um, and so you end up playing kind of a string of games also sometimes Sometimes you just want vengeance when you just didn't win and you want to win you're like I'll go back with my money 
you know, make some more money. Um, yeah, so th it's it's kind of fun. It's it's definitely kind of easy going. Um, it's very easy to teach because, well, it's all very obvious what's happening. And if you've ever seen a horse race before, you'll know what it is. Um, I think the most inventive parts of the game are some of the additional bids, right? So there's, there's the middle section of the board where you can bet on who's first, who's second or who's second or first or who placed, you know, who's first, second or third. You can also bet by colour if you think like the orange, an orange horse will win or whatever. Um, you can also bet on, there's a section of bets across the top that change each game. So it'll be like, if red beats, you know, orange and orange, you'll get this many points, things like that. And then at the bottom, there's kind of these wild kind of crazy bets um, that'll say things like, you know, if the second horse is within a nose of the first horse, you can uh, get extra points there and they get added on to each round. Um, after each round as well, you also gain your own special power, which is kind of cool um, to play with for the rest of the game. Some of those powers are very strong. Some of them are like extra poker chips to bet with. Um, not poker chips, just chips. Um, and they're nice too. So it just adds a little bit of flavor to it. Um, overall, I've had a really good time with this game. Um, I, th I think it, it's really, really fun. And I think most people I've showed it to have liked it, um, which is even more important. Um, and that's always a good thing. And plus you can play it with a group. I could definitely, uh, yeah, I can see this in a lot of kind of, you know, party kind of group situations. So this is a new territory for me. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with this one. So that's a ready, set, bet. And on that kind of high note, I'm gonna hop right over to the games I've been playing where we kind of have a continuation of theme. Right, so games I've been playing. Um, this is a bit unusual this month. Um, like, firstly, most of the games I've been playing have been the games I've bought. I don't think I've ever played so much of games I've just bought immediately. Normally, they'll get one play and then I'll come back to them later. But I have three plays of Earth. I've God knows how many plays of Ready, Set, Bet. <laughs> Only one play of Vindication, unfortunately. Um, but that kind of thing has been occupying my gaming space. But the other unusual and pretty fun thing that's been happening is that I've been getting to play games with other people. Um, so I've been playing a ga some games with my friend and their wife. And this kind of was, was an interesting challenge in the sense that you know when you go and you visit someone's house and they, they, they ask you to bring games and you're like, what will we bring? Um, you know, how, how much do I, how much do I really know about these people? What would be appropriate? Um, and also, you don't want to scare your friends off. And that's the problem with being inside a hobby so much, right? And having so much information. You've done all this research, you've played all these things and you want to share them with everybody. Um, but that's not always the best approach. I think you have to treat them like a scared horse, you know, like approach with caution and very gently. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these approach with caution games and I would also love to hear your suggestions because as I said my own kind of pool with this is kind of limited because I don't normally yeah I don't normally get lighter games with groups um, this is quite new um, but I had a couple that I had to pull out so these were kind of my recommendations for you know if you're not sure, <laughs> if you're not sure what's going on. Um, and you've probably heard me talk about some of these before, but I'm gonna do it again because I think they're awesome. So you can always skip over these if you don't want kind of light group games. Um, so the first that comes to the table and always hits the table positively and well is Wits and Wagers from North Star Games. Wits and Wagers is possibly the best trivia game ever made. And I'm saying that without having played most trivia games. Um, but it is just such a fantastic kind of opener and way of getting to know other people. And also a game that doesn't put pressure really on anybody at all. Um, so it's got that great appeal to it. And Wits and Wagers is a game, yes, about trivia, but it's not one where you're expected to know the answer, hence the no pressure part. Um, what will happen is that um, it'll go around the table and each person will read out a question from a whole pile of questions. And you'll be expected to come up with an answer. And the answer will always be a number. So your goal is to get the number right or to get it as right as possible without going over the number. Um, and so everybody will write down what they think the number is or what their closest is and then you kind of you line them up on the table and then you get to bet on whose answer you think is right. 
Um, so you're trying to make money, um, of course, because, you know, this is a betting trivia game. But as I said, you don't have to have the right answer if you can bet on someone else you think might. Um, and that's always a fun kind of thing. Also, the questions are generally quite hilarious. Um, and I, I definitely felt like I got to know the other people in my group based by what questions they chose to read out or kind of their thought process by how they got to the answer. Because I know we don't play it in silence. We do a lot of talking. Well, you're like, how big is an American football pitch? You know, the, the kind of things like we're trying to work everything out between us. Um, um, and so had a lot of I had a lot of fun with that. I always do. Um, there's a, also a Vegas edition of this where you can kind of um, have odds on the bets or on the answers you've put out and things like that. And um, that's the edition I have. I know in the states there's like a Target edition of it, so for really cheap as well. So it's it, I don't know. I think it's well worth picking up. I absolutely love with some wagers. And the best part was was that our new person asked to play it again. So I always think that's a positive, right? Um, it I think it's a great game for for parties for loads of people. Um, and I think it's just one of those laugh out loud moments, you know, like what did you think that was? How did you think that number was that? Um, and whatnot. So um, yeah, so that is Wits and Wagers. I talk about it quite a bit, but that's simply because it's just so good. Um, right, so that was uh, the first thing we, we pulled out. Um, the second game that came out um, that I'm sure many of you know, or maybe you don't, um, is probably one of the games that's been in my collection the longest. And this is Apples to Apples. Um, and so this is a little card game about basically kind of not quite guessing what someone's thinking, but knowing what someone might be thinking. Um, <laughs> so how it works is that there are two types of cards um, to play with. There's ones that will be in your hand and these are all kind of descriptive words or they're persons, places or things, things from history, events, um, things like that. And then one player will flip over one of the green apple cards. And what that is, is these are kind of descriptions. So they'll be like, what do I think is honorable? So that's what they'll say. Um, so they'll have a card and it's up to everyone else to hand them a card that they think they'll think is honorable you put them all in upside down no one knows which answer is which and then the person who flipped over the green card will go through all the cards given to them and decide which one they believe it would be honorable right um and then it passes around the table um this is a really interesting one for getting people's sense of humor right because there's a whole bunch of cards you could put in ironically um and things like that that you would you would get to you would get to know somebody a little bit about or based on their kind of the choices they would make you're like oh okay they, they like this or they're into that um so i always think this one is pretty fun yet again the stakes are incredibly low it's the first person i think to get seven answers um correct is the winner but it's not really that it's much more of an activity of you know connecting words or connecting people and places and things with these words um but it's always a good laugh you can play with loads of people as well um in fact it's probably recommended so you have more answers to choose from but i always feel this is another one that puts people at ease um that because i think there's a fear that when someone when you say to someone oh, i'm going to teach you a board game that they're anticipating that it's going to take a lot of time there's going to be a lot of rules there's going to be so much to get through and i'm a big fan of games that explain themselves just by being on the table you should be able to look at the game and figure out what kind of thing it's trying to do i think at least in these situations until you can gauge somebody's kind of interest um in things i think that's always a a, a good way of going about it um, so yeah, so Apples to Apples is yeah a game I've had forever um, and it always goes down good too. But like I said, definitely like lighter, fun, get to know each other kind of category. Um, I'm a big fan of these lighter games when they're not silly. I think it has to have a purpose. I think you have to actively be doing something for it to be, you know, particularly enjoyable um, and things like that. So I'm quite, I'm quite happy with how these two went. And then... I rounded out the evening with a copy of Potion Explosion. Um, has anybody played that? You might have played the app. Apparently the app was really popular for a while. 
But Potion Explosion is a game about creating potions by matching kind of beads of, of the same color together um, to use in your potions. Um, you need a picture really of the little thing that feeds out the beads. It's got like its own little engine, a little machine where you put all the beads into and they'll come out randomly in different colors into the rows. And what you're trying to do is get as many of the same color to click together. And you get to take away one ball. So you get to keep that and then you get to keep everything that clicks together after that. That. So there's a whole bunch of combos going on to fill in your potions, which will want these different color balls to do it. Um, I think Potion Explosion is another one that it, you see it, you know what it's doing. Um, also, it's very tactile. You physically have the balls in front of you to put physically into your potions. And I think that's a really nice touch. Um, I think the only thing that's a little complicated about Potion Explosion is each potion will have its own kind of special power. Um, and you're going to need to basically like read those to understand the powers. You know the kind of way. Um, so I, I must print out some kind of little charts or little reminders for those um, because otherwise it's just in the rule book um, but that game was definitely a step up from the other two um, and it did go down well I think it took a while um, but then kind of it all makes sense and fits together you know that kind of thing so I, I think Potion Explosion is very good at that and um, whereas it can seem very complicated initially because there's all these colors there's all these balls you have to do these things but once you start into it you're like it's kind of a mechanical process I always find it kind of soothing to be fair to play Potion Explosion unless you're sitting next to somebody who keeps taking the colors that you would like which can be known to happen. Um, so yeah, so I think I think that was a pretty successful game evening. I would love to know what three games would you have brought to somebody's house who you don't know very well. And they do play games, but you don't want to overwhelm them. Um, yeah, I would, I would love your top picks and some of your suggestions. Because um, yeah, I I'm sure there's a whole world of these games that I've just not looked at before. So now I'm suddenly like, peeking at things with new eyes, <laughs> new ways of seeing. Um, okay, so th that's kind of all of the, the light fun games. Um, there's one more game I'm going to talk about because uh, this game makes me think I should make a list of, of games that are underappreciated. Um, if you would like to see a list of you know games I think deserve more recognition, um, let me know in the comment box below and I'll give it some consideration. Um, because right now I want to talk about Argent the Consortium. This is from Level 99 Games, and if any of you are familiar with this publishing company, there's one thing you need to know about them, which is everything they make is so over the top. Um, and that's not a word of a lie. I have a, a couple of games from them and everything is OTT. And I think it's kind of in a, a good way. And Argent the Consortium is no exception. Um, and it's a game about basically it's set in a school of wizards and they need to appoint a new arch chancellor and you want it to be you because why not you're the best person for the job and how it works is that there are a number of arch mages who have a vote and you want to convince them that they should vote for you and you do this by basically giving them what they request so on the side of the the board there'll be these arch arch mages upside down and throughout the game you'll get to peek and see what it is they want for you to do and you need to go and do it and so how this works is there's a worker placement game there's a number of rooms in the university the magical university and each one will have kind of obviously different actions you can do but sometimes have different focuses on things so you can get spells you can get items you can get kind of scrolls which will help you learn your spells you can get books that you also need for spells um you can get money you can get mana so you can cast your spells and what's interesting about this is that you can harm each other's wizards <laughs> so if somebody's in the spot you know that you wanted well you can send them to the infirmary and take the spot for yourself and there are ways of doing things and each with you start with like a set of wizards in different colors and each with each color wizard has a special ability that they can do so red wizards can kill other people um purple wizards are fast they're fast action you can do them before you might do your action for the turn um kind of cool things like that so there'll be a lot of jostling for the board but nothing resolves till the end of the round <laughs> till now everybody's out of wizards or somebody's taking kind of last there's some end of round cards as well and then everything resolves and you want things to resolve in the right order so you can get the stuff you need 
So the interesting part of this game is the scoring, about trying to decide who who wins basically, um, which chancellors vote. So someone can say, you know, which some chancellor can be, I want the person who has the most blue things in play. So that'll go across objects and spells. Um, you can have supporters as well. Um, and so then you're, you're counting yours up and your opponent's counting theirs up. Um, and these can be, you can learn this during the game, what this end game scoring is, or you can ignore it and not know anything. Um, I highly recommend figuring out what it is you need to score, but also watching what your opponent's up to because you want to make sure you have one more than them or do as good as them, if possible, to deny them particular scoring points. Um, so there is a lot going on here. <laughs> There's lots of things to keep track of. Your tableau gets ever larger and larger as you have spells and items and supporters and all sorts of things um, to kind of help you in your quest to become the chancellor. But this is really, really fun. It's really, really colourful. Um, it's very engaging because you do kind of, you do kind of, I want to use the word parry, but that's not the word I mean at all. You do engage with your opponent quite a bit about, you know, jostling for positions um, and things like that. So it keeps it interesting. Um, and there's just lots and lots to enjoy here. Um, it's one of, it's one of my favourites. Um, the thing about it, of course, is that because there's so much, it takes up quite a lot of space on the table. This is a, a big game, um, but it is just such a blast to play. Um, and I finally got a win last week. So I was like, yes, finally, um, I get to be in charge of the university. Um, but there's all sorts of things um, to enjoy here, like the fact that the, the board is modular, so you can flip over the tiles, have different rooms each time. There are two expansions um, of which I have both. So there's one kind of a holiday themed one where everyone is scantily clad. I don't enjoy that as much. There's a techno monsters one where there's a new type of wizard who does some cool stuff as well. Um, I'm not even sure the game needs these expansions, but I kind of can't help myself. I'm like, when you've already got it all and it's huge, you may as well just add, add more to it. Um, but it's a game I don't hear people talk about um, and I think they should. I think it's a crackingly good game um and i just yeah i love it a lot i have a lot of love for it so <laughs> so yeah so that's arguing the consortium that's the kind of the last game i've been playing this month right so i'm gonna pop over into the the personal chit chat section if you want to hang around for that um hopefully you will and we'll see what i've been doing the past month so this past month has been kind of crazy busy with just like life stuff. It seems to have all piled itself up at one point. I don't know if that happens to you guys where, you know, your house insurance, your car insurance and something else is all due at the same time for no reason. It all just kind of the stars aligned and suddenly things happen. Um, so it's feeling like a little bit like that. There's just so many appointments and things I needed to be going to. So it's been a really exhausting month, hence why there's been kind of so few just kind of individual plays of games and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm still happy with the ones I, I did get to play. So that's always positive. Um, so as for the channel itself, um, yeah, I felt weird not making a monthly roundup video. I was watching the dates going, I need to make it like today or tomorrow. And then I'm like, but I said I wasn't going to make one. Um, you know what? I, I'm nothing without this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not entirely true, but um, I think, I don't know, I think it's important to keep busy. I'm trying not to put pressure on myself for things, so there'll be no review reviews. Um, but I think I can keep this going. This always seems to be the kind of the fun video, the, the random chit chat kind of thing. And I was trying really hard to figure out what I was going to tell you, because I was like, what will we do? What will we do? So um, I've broken it down. So <laughs> I'll uh, continue on. The first thing I've been continuing to do is get out of my bicycle. I've been working very hard on that. My bicycle's not, you know, helping me back or anything, but, you know, I'm still getting out and I'm cycling. The other thing I do a lot of is go to the cinema. I think you guys might be aware of this by now. So I was like, I'm going to tell you about, let's say, what, what movie, movie of the month. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about um, the Flash movie. Um, mostly because I think it's surrounded in so much kind of controversy and questions and things like that. Um, so as far as I'm aware, the Flash movie wasn't going to be made because it's, it's lead actor, um, Ezra Miller, I think, um, did some really terrible, stupid things as, as far as I can tell anyway, and that they were going, they weren't going to release the movie with him in the title. And then you've got to wonder, was it capitalism or was it art that won out and they decided, you know, oh, we better, we're going to release it. And 
I don't know if I was excited for this because I'm well sick of my superhero movies at this point but I um, decided to go see it anyway um, and you know what I, I really enjoyed it I, I had an awful lot of fun with it because I think it's just a little bit silly it was just a little bit crazy and it features uh, Michael Keaton's Batman, which was awesome. I, every time I hear that Danny Elfman theme for Batman, it's just like my skin just lights up. It's like, oh, it, it, it just takes me back. Um, and so I actually had a, a lot of fun at the movie, to be fair. I had a really great time up until the point where I went and I read the comments on the internet. Um, I think this says a lot about life too, not just about this movie, where people were really hating on the movie. They were like, oh, it's so terrible, the CGI is awful, why did they release this? And I was like, was it that bad? Is, is, I'm like, was I wrong? Did I not enjoy this? Um, and you know what? I just think different people will go into the cinema with different expectations. I think I went in with very low expectations, so I enjoyed it. I don't know if like real fans will feel different about the movie or not. Maybe they did. But it's really funny, I think, how influential the internet is. Because um, when everyone it seems when it seems like everyone else is saying you're wrong. You're like, am I wrong? I, 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 I question myself a little bit, but no, I think I enjoyed it. And especially when it comes to something like a movie, which is, you know, entirely based on opinion and not facts. Don't worry, I'm, you know, um, facts are important. Science is important. Um, yeah, I just, it kind of, I don't know if it soured my experience of it or not, or maybe a little bit. But like I said, I, I, ha I had fun, fun with it anyway. Um, the other movie I'm going to talk about is one that was not in the cinema. <laughs> um, and it's something that really kind of, I don't know, it had left an impression on me. Um, so I don't know how many of you are fans of Nicolas Cage. Um, I'm a huge fan of Nick Cage. Um, I know he's kind of got this reputation as this, you know, actor who always overacts and he's kind of too dramatic or things like that, or just kind of crazy, silly things. And some of that might for sure be true. Um, but I've always enjoyed him. I always think he's made a movie better by being in it. So I've been, you know, I've been watching all of his re recent releases and things like that for some time. But he did win an Academy Award and I'd never watched the movie. Um, and it's called Leaving Las Vegas. And first off, trigger warning, it's an incredibly sad movie <laughs> with lots of alcoholism. Um, so I'll just say that right out of the bat. But... What the movie is about is a, a guy who, who's drinking a lot, absolutely, he's drinking a lot, and his life seems to be falling apart because of all the, all the drink. And he goes to Las Vegas and he decides, basically, he's just going to drink until he dies. He's just going to drink himself to death. And he meets a sex worker there in Las Vegas. And they kind of form, and I hate to say this, an unlikely friendship. But no, a kind of an understanding between them and, you know, and they become friends and kind of spend time together um, up until kind of the end of the movie where ultimately, you know, Nicolas Cage has to expire because he's drinking all of the time. And there's something, there's something about Nicolas Cage's performance in this that is right on the nose where He's a, like what we probably would call a little over the top. It's just right for this. And there's something about the way he looks at his co-actress that broke my heart. It had the it had the, the face of somebody who knows that things are finally coming to an end. So there's a kind of a, a happiness there, but there's a sadness there too. Um, his performance is whoo, oh yeah I, I'm still thinking about it like a week later and I'm still thinking about the movie as well about what it what it's about what, what it meant you know um, you know kind of what was the point of it and I found a, um, an interview with the director actually um, there's actually very few reviews of this film online I wanted to go and have someone else help me pick it apart so maybe I could make sense of it but the director said something really interesting and he was, he goes, do you ever know one of those people that he goes, they're normally very intelligent and very talented individuals, oftentimes kind of artists. And you'll see them kind of destroying their lives for no reason. Like you'll see them going down a particular path and you're not sure why. You can't put your finger on what's wrong with them or why they're behaving like this, but they, but they are. Um, that they're kind of like their own 
the architect of their own downfall kind of thing. And he's like, I wanted that in this movie. He goes, there are so many movies with happy people all of the time. He goes, for once, I wanted to capture that kind of sadness. And that really resonated with me as a rather sad person at the best of times. Um, and I thought, I don't know, I just, just something about it I found very... Yeah, it's like it's rough. It's rough to watch, but it it definitely gave me pause for thought. So that's kind of been like the the movie highlight of the month. I don't know if any of you have seen it. I don't know if I could rec. I should recommend it. I don't know. Maybe you're in the mood for that kind of thing. You know, don't expect to come out like feeling the joys of life. <laughs> but I'm really glad I watched it, and um, maybe I'll come back next month with another Nicolas Cage movie. For a whole five minutes, I was like, I'm going to make a video review of every Nicolas Cage movie he's been in. And then I went and I looked it up online and someone else has already done it. <laughs> and that guy's doing quite a good job, actually. Um, so maybe uh, we won't go that far. I, was, I wasn't sure the jump from board games to movies. It's kind of a big jump, right? Um, other than that, what's been going on? There have been birds, as usual, less birds than normal. There's been less going out because the weather's been a bit dodgy and there's been things happening at the weekend. So it's not been as exciting as normal. And there's... Yeah, the, the <laughs> um, and I think that's probably about it. I've been working with the gimbal um, to try and get kind of nice board game shots because I've always wanted to be able to do kind of the over the table thing to show you guys everything set up because that's what I'd want to see if I was deciding to buy a board game. I want to see what it looks like in the middle of a game and to give you an idea what it's about. Um, I have discovered I have incredibly shaky hands. <laughs> And so that doesn't always work the best uh, with that. But I'm seeing if I could figure out something, maybe an extra handle or something to stabilize myself. Didn't realize how shaky I was till I needed to not be shaky. Sounds about right. Um, so that has pretty much been June. Um, so hopefully um, I will, I will, or you will have seen um, the trip around my games room. It's, it's definitely coming or, or has come. This is we're talking in two tenses. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And I hope you all had a good month. Let me know what you've been playing. Has there been anything cool? I'm all open for your suggestions, thoughts and ideas. All right. So um, tune in again next time. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.